Hey guys, Chris Desmond here from the Uncomfortable Is Okay podcast, having a bit of a chat to you today about five strategies that you can use to get out of your comfort zone. Now, understanding that uncomfortable situations and feelings are okay and normal, and actually taking action despite them are two very different things. It's difficult for us to take action if we're in the middle of this discomfort especially if we haven't trained ourselves to do so. As we gradually train ourselves to get better with dealing with the uncomfortable, our ability to take action improves. There are some strategies that we can use to help us get through this, especially in the initial stages as we're learning. Not all these techniques are going to work for everyone, uh, and the techniques are often best utilised in different circumstances. And none of these techniques that I'm talking about today are actually from myself. I've got them all from my podcast guests. Uh, The first one is to develop a mantra. So Art Green from episode 65 of the Uncomfortable Is Okay podcast uses the technique of creating a mantra for himself. Uh, When faced with an uncomfortable task, he'll utilize a short phrase to help build confidence and to help create momentum to start the task. Digby Scott from episode 68 also uses this strategy to get uncomfortable. A mantra should be short, positive, punchy, easy to repeat, and should increase your energy levels. So art uses your art green, let's go dominate. And Digby uses... You only live once. You don't want to miss out on this. Repeating this mantra to yourself, if you're reticent to start a short task that you know you'll be better if you do, can give you that initial kick to get you moving. Another strategy is picturing the task 10 times bigger. If it's something that's going to take a lot of time or effort, or if the end point is far away, Sometimes a mantra isn't enough to get you moving. Grant Axe Rawlinson from episode 75 uses a different strategy. He looks at the task that he needs to complete and then he multiplies it by 10 and tries to work out how to achieve that. Once he does this, looking at that initial challenge isn't so scary any longer. So for example, he was thinking of rowing across the Tasman Sea from Australia to New Zealand, which is a massive challenge in itself um, and really scary to look at. But rather than just asking how he could complete this row, Grant multiplied this task and asked him how he could get from Singapore to New Zealand completely under human power. And suddenly, rowing the Tasman Sea didn't seem like such a big deal. We'll often be overwhelmed with the size of a challenge. If we stop and think bigger and formulate a quick strategy to deal with this larger problem, almost incomprehensible task, then looking back at our original challenge is no longer as daunting. Another strategy is to take five breaths and ask, is this true? Talking back to that voice in our head is pretty tough at times especially because we hardly ever do it. It's much easier to believe the thoughts and preconceived ideas that pop up rather than questioning them. Justine Hamill from episode 76 trains herself to talk back to that voice. When she becomes aware of uncomfortable feelings or thoughts telling her something, she stops before acting on them. In this pause, she asks herself the question, is this true? She questions those voices in her head, the ones that we've created to try and keep ourselves safe, but also the ones that usually hold us back. Asking this question gives her a chance to analyse the situation and recognise if this is something she actually needs to worry about, or if those voices are trying to mislead her. We all question that voice that tells us to jump out into traffic, or to let go if we're high up. Why don't we question the voice that tells us to stop as well? Uh, Another concept is urge surfing. Uh, And this is a concept that I used when I stopped drinking alcohol uh, earlier last year. Um, An urge or a feeling is like a wave. It starts to build up in us getting bigger and bigger 
uh, until it peaks and crashes furiously on the shore. Noticing this uncomfortable fe feeling and thinking of it like a wave can allow us to surf along with it rather than letting it crash over the top of us and push us down. Surfing along with this feeling can actually almost be an enjoyable experience because we know that it's going to pass. Riding it like we ride a wave um, or riding it like we ride an ecstatic feeling can almost give you that same buzz. Once that uncomfortable feeling has passed, then you can get down to business or you might even find that riding that wave uh, motivates you to start what you need to start. The final strategy is ask yourself, what is the worst case scenario? Then ask yourself, can I get through that? Lucy Revel from episode 69 and Trevor Boehm from e episode 73 approach the uncomfortable situations by analyzing what the worst case scenario is. When faced with an uncomfortable challenge, our thought processes will often spiral around all the things that could go wrong. Rather than spending time getting wrapped up in this, it's often more useful to identify the one thing that would be the worst case scenario if what we feared worse from the situation were to happen. And once we've figured out what the worst case scenario is, then we can ask ourselves, how can I get through that? Planning for the worst case scenario can take away some of the anxiety around a challenge. Knowing what you'll do if things go wrong will release some of the tension associated with worrying about it. Then you're much more likely to get going. So there you go guys, five strategies to get out of your comfort zone today. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time to get uncomfortable with me today.